Hi, today I'm going to show you how to knit this beautiful spring sweater. Let's get started. Okay, so first of all, please check my description box for all the details. I am going to put all the links you might need in my description box below, such as my website for written pattern and other related video. All right? Today, I'm going to show you how to knit this beautiful, beautiful magnolia design sweater. This little bit looks like a cable knitting, but it's not. It's lace knitting stitch. It's beautiful. And as you can see, there's a little hole, gap, whatever you call. People usually use yarn over technique. And I'm going to use yarn over technique. However, this was the tricky part. So if you're a beginner, if I use the word yarn over, sometimes you get confused. So I decide to use the term double, double, uh, double yarn over and yarn front instead of the uh, yarn over because I want you to make sure how to use your working yarn. You know, the where the working yarn supposed to be at, front or back or wrapping around, stuff like that. So that's the only tricky part for this project, pretty much. So you don't really have to worry about other things, especially if you ever needed it, my raglan sweater before. But I will try to show you step by step anyway. So even if you're a beginner, you should be able to knit this. It looks a little bit difficult because there's a bubble and gap and all that, but don't worry. But one thing I want to tell you right now, please watch this video until the end and make sure about it. I knitted it from top to down. Top part, nothing really special. Very simple. Only one color and everything. The one thing, neck rib, I use knit back loop stitch instead of just knitting regular stitch because of at the bottom of the uh, sweater, this is actually including the uh, flower design. As you can see, there's a little bit different texture. At the bottom, I use knit back loop because I kind of want to show more visible. If I use just knitting stitch at the very bottom, it doesn't show much. So, this is part of the uh, flower design. So, I decide, okay, my neck rib, I should use the uh, knit back loop technique. Also, the uh, sleeve rib. So, it matches, right? And it's kind of, you know, cute accent. So, and it's easy. And sleeve, I knit just past the, uh, my elbow, no decrease, no increase. And at the end of the uh, knitting sleeve, I decrease, then add rib. As you can see, looks a little bit like a balloon sleeve. It's so cute. And back of the uh, neck rib, I add a little bit 
uh, you know, length using Japanese short roll. Okay? That fits you better. And this time, I didn't actually knit the uh, gauge. I used the uh, the swatch with the, uh, you know, the yarn label on it. However, I knit the design, flower design, from top to bottom. The reason why I did this instead of knitting gauge because I want to know how tall it's going to be. Because, again, I was knitting from top to down, right? So I kind of want to make sure when to stop. All right? And if it's a little bit short, that's fine. I can add rib. And I, I actually did. Right? But if you knit way too long before you start flower stitch, that's going to be way too long. Sweater. Anyway, my flower is 8 inch. So I was kind of aiming to 9 inch total, which means I have to stop 9 inch before, I mean from the bottom, then start knitting that flower design. You know what I'm saying? So instead of knitting gauge, I recommend you to knit that sample. All right? So let's get started. Let me talk about to find out my cast on number. All right? This is what I used for gauge. Okay, so let's figure it out, the uh, cast on number. If you want, you can go to my website to download this gauge math formula template because it's so much easier if you have this because you don't have to do any more math. Anyway, um, here is my swatch and gauge. I'm going to put the number here with my swatch, which is 4 inch by 4 inch. And gauge was 18 stitch and 24 rows with 4 inch by 4 inch square. All right? And my neck opening desire length is 20 inches. My neck itself is 12 inches. And I kind of want to, you know, have wide neck opening. So right here, I'm going to put the 20 inch. There we go. And first section, my swatch 4 inch versus my desired neck length 20 inch. I have 18 stitch count with 4 inch. What about 20 inch right here? There you go. 90 stitches I have to knit. However, this has to be multiple of 6. So let's go down this section. So I put the 6 here and go look. There you go. There's the 90. So I can pick, I can start with 90 cast on. However, however, this flower pattern is repeat of 16 stitches. So let me actually check right here. 16, I put 16, multiple of 16 and enter and go down. There you go. There's 96. 96 is actually multiple of 6. Okay? So I decide I'm going to use 96 cast on. It's really up to you. Later on, you have to adjust the number anyway. But I kind of want to, you know, try with the number of multiple of 16. And it turned 
to be good number for me anyway. So that's my cast on number. All right. So let's go back to the knitting part. Cast on, I made 96. Or your number with multiple of 6. One thing I want to mention before I start anything. Pick light color of yarn. If it's dark, sometimes it's hard to see the uh, flower design. I knitted it with gray. It was really hard to see. Okay, so after I made the uh, cast on, I connect both ends. I add the uh, biggie marker and start making rib. This time, use knit back loop. Easy. Just put the needle in and knit back loop. That's knit back loop. Then, purl. So, the rib should be repeat of knit back loop and purl one. Knit back loop and purl one. Until your desired length. I knitted it about 3 inch and I made double neck. So there's no raw edge. So here comes. This is end of the uh, row number 1. Right? And from the uh, second row, you just knit over knit stitch and purl over purl stitch. Knit means, you know, knit back loop. Keep knitting back loop for the rib. Make sure back loop and purl one. That's pretty much it. And the uh, double neck is optional. Again, I knit about three inch and this is the easy you just have to knit i'm sorry the fold inward and pick up the uh, bottom of the stitch S you go straight down okay i start with the uh, knit right so the wrong side should be purl so you have to kind of you know go down straight down and pick up the uh, end of the uh, stitch like that and knit and next should be knitting stitch on wrong side because it was purl one on right side right so pick up and then purl two together so you just have to keep doing this to make double neck this is completely optional if you want to do it you can do it but I'm glad I did it. Looks a little bit more professional knitting. And I finished. It's all connect. And I am going to knit one round. And add in two markers to spread in half. Front and back. The Where the biggie marker is, that's center of your back piece. And the other side will be half. So you kind of have to count evenly from begin marker. And the other side should be front. It's easy. So knit one round and add in the uh, marker. Get ready for next round. And next, I am going to talk about the uh, short row for back of your neck. There we go. I knit one round and add marker and spread back and front. Front piece, I'm not going to knit for a little while, only back piece. Right now, the neck rib is at same level like this. Then I'm going to raise only for back piece like that. I'll show you old sweater there we go as you can see 
the back piece is raised, right? So let's look at the back piece. I want you to see the raglan line. Raglan line starts a bit below the neck rib right there, right? But front piece, raglan line starts right after the neck rib. That's how much I raised. In the center of the back, go to right and left, kind of, you know, knit back and forth in flat. And every time, shorter and shorter. So, which means the center of the back will be thicker, raised, and towards to shoulder, thinner. So, just like a valley, you know? Okay? And I am going to use the technique called Japanese short row. First of all, you have to find out your short row magic number. Number one, you need to find out your stitch count for back piece, which is only half, right? For me, 96 divided by 2 is 48. And then you have to find out how tall you want to raise. And I decide 12 rows, you know, about 2 inch. So, Back piece stitch count divided by 12 rows for me is 4. This is my short row magic number, base number. All right? You need to find out this magic number. And also you need clip on marker. If you don't have it, you can use the... Uh, anything clip on all right so let's move on to show row gap row i call gap row knitting side knit all the way down to side marker and whenever you knit until side marker you turn the project because now you're knitting only back piece right and then you're facing to pro side. This is gap pro number two, pro side. Yarn front and slip one pro wise. Yarn front and slip one pro wise. Then put the clip on marker right on the working yarn and hold that marker because you don't want to lose then start making pro that's it and now you're making pro all the way down to the other side of the uh, side marker okay just keep knitting here comes all the way two more stitch done and then turn, same as the other side, but now you're facing to knitting side. So keep the yarn back, slip one pro-wise, same as before, and then put the clip-on marker right on the working yarn. Again, you got to hold that marker. You don't want to lose it, and then start knitting. That's it, pretty much. You know, this is the gap row, okay? And you have to knit until last four stitch, okay? Not from the marker. Last four stitch from the gap. Where's the gap? Every time you turn, you create the gap, okay? So this side, when I turn, there we go. I create the uh, gap as well. Okay? So, you have to count stitches from that gap, not the clip. So, and I'm going to actually put the uh, another clip on marker for the uh, indication. One, two, three, four. Right there. So, 
Now I have to knit until that indication yellow marker. So I don't really have to check, right? Uh, how many more, how many more. So, you know, use the uh, different color of the, uh, you know, uh, marker. So it's easier for you to find out, right? You know, try not to make a mistake. Anyway, so just knit. And for this side, I am actually going to add indication marker for next round. So this way, I don't really have to, you know, pass that line, right? But you don't really have to do this, but it's, it's easier for me anyway. So just knit until the yellow marker this time, all right? It's quite simple. So you don't really have to worry about anything. Here comes yellow marker, remove, turn around, and again, every time you turn around, you create the uh, gap. Yarn front and slip one purl wise. Oops, I forgot the uh, clip. That's right. Put the uh, clip on marker right on the uh, working yarn, hold it, then start making purl because you're facing to purl side now. And again, if you want, now you can count from the uh, gap. If it's four stitch, you can add indication marker again for next row, okay? So now you just have to make a purl until orange marker, which is actually four stitch from the, uh, the last gap. Here it comes. And then remove the uh, orange marker and slip one purl wise and then put the uh, clip on marker right on the uh, working yarn and then start knitting. And you just have to repeat gap row number three and four until your desired rows, which means, um, okay, example, for me, 12 rows, right? So six clip on left side and six clip on right side. Total of 12 clip on, which means I did 12 rows. So you just go back and forth, back and forth. All right? And after the gap row, you have to close the gaps. All right? Now I finished. I did 12 rows. As you can see, in the middle of the back piece, it's higher, raised, right? That's perfect shape. I like that, okay? And now you're going to close the gap you created. And this is so easy and fun, all right? So let's finish knitting side of the uh, gap. Just knit until the gap, not the marker, until the gap. There we go. Here comes big gap. Now you pull the marker. Hook onto left needle like that and remove the marker. Then this is knit inside, so knit two together to close the gap. That's it. And again, keep knitting until next gap, and then pull the marker, hook onto left needle to create the you know extra stitch, and then knit two together to decrease one stitch. Right, you. Um, that extra stitch and close the gap. And here comes, this is the last gap I have to close, right? And 
for now, I'm going to leave the uh, uh, side marker because I need next stitch hook on to left needle and knit two together. And this is actually important. After the last gap by close, you have to turn, which means you create another gap here. So this is going to be my last Japanese short row. Okay, so put the clip on marker and slip one pearl wise. Oh, I actually did the, uh, you know, pearl, but I will fix it. Okay, anyway, pearl all the way down to the uh, gap, I exactly same difference is now you're making pearl okay so right here you have to pass the uh, marker and there you go gap so pull the marker hook on the left needle to make an extra stitch now you have to make pearl two together to close the gap and you do exactly same thing until last one there we go one more time Pearl and now pull the marker hook on the left and pearl two together. And I meet you at the very last gap. Right there. And there we go. And this is the last. Remove the side marker and hook on, then pearl two together to close. Now, remember, you're facing to pearl side, which means you have to turn around again. However, you're never going to knit pearl side anymore. There we go. So you can't do JSR here. Okay? And I will do... Uh, some other thing okay so this side i'm not going to do jsr however i have to close the gap right because i turn around so i'm i i close the gap anyway so i put the uh, marker for just in case you know i don't want to miss right and this is just for the uh, you know indication for gap anyway knit all the way back to the uh, beginning marker and past that beginning marker, you just knit one more round, okay? And close those two gaps. And then I'm going to move on to increasing, okay? So just knit around. But first, I meet you at the first gap, which is just a regular JSR because this is knit inside, okay? Okay, so here it comes. Again, you can do JSR because this is knit inside. Hook, remove the marker, and then knit two together to close that first gap. Easy. And Move on to second gap. Second gap, you can't do the uh, JSR technique because that was pearl side. So what I do is, you know, to close the, uh, the gap, I increase, then decrease right away. I pick up the uh, previous stitch, left side, just like make one left, okay? There you go. And then, just like a SSK. You know what I'm saying? There you go. I pick one extra and then SSK. And this time, kind of make one right. 
pick up the previous stitch and then knit two together. That's it. You know, to close the, uh, the gap, the best way is increase and decrease right away. That's the best method. There you go. And if you get confused and you don't want to do it, fine. Just, you know, knit a tight, tiny bit of the uh, hole you will create, but, you know, it's okay. But if you do what I just did, you can close the gap pretty much, you know, completely. So after the uh, second gap you close, go back to begin marker, which is the center of the uh, back piece. Just keep knitting. And then now let's move on to increasing, which is, you know, every round one line you got to increase, right? So after this, I want you to add raglan markers. It's easy. The whole stitch divided by 6. For me, 96 divided by 6 is 16. That's my raglan magic number. And um, again, the the begin marker is the center of back, right? So count evenly. For the back piece and front piece, magic number times two stitch. So for me, 16 left, 16 right. Total of 32 stitch for back piece for me. And then magic number number times one that's gonna be my shoulder and sleeve then rest of it same as back piece magic number times two all right that's gonna be 32 so that's how you divide it okay full section but the you know the amount of the uh, stitch is a little bit different so Let's start. Okay, so increase in row number one. Knit until last one stitch from the marker. Okay, right side. I am going to do make one right. Previous stitch, right side. Hook on to left needle like that, and then knit that extra, and then knit original. This is make one right. I'm actually changing the uh, marker, and right after the uh, marker, okay, first of all, You want to pick up the left side of the previous stitch. No, you can't. So knit one first, then two stitch down. Because the one stitch down, you just create it. So you can't really pick that one. So two down, left side, pick up. It's hard. Sometimes, you know, it's hard. So then you use, you know, cable needle or whatever. Okay. So the second stitch down, you hook onto left and then knit back loop. This is make one left. Okay. So you have to increase right side and left side of the marker every raglan line, which means there's four marker equal eight. Don't increase at the begin marker, okay? That's not the raglan marker. Don't forget that. And then I'll show you actually one more time. Knit until one last stitch before the marker, right? And then 
make one, right? So previous one stitch down, previous right side of the uh, stitch, hook onto left and knit that extra and then knit original. And then slide the marker, make one left this time. So knit one first, then two stitch down previous. There we go. That's the one. Then knit back loop. This is make one left. And increasing row number two, no increasing. So just knit one round and you just have to repeat row number one and row number two until your desired length. I knitted it about 8 inch, the raglan line, 8 inch. And back and front raglan line has to meet under your armpit. That's the time you stop. You stop right after the uh, row number 2. Now, I am going to separate the sleeves from yoke. And... I want you to count front and back piece. Mine, 144. Okay, and I am going to knit only those body part. However, okay, when you separate the sleeve and reconnect front and back, with, I am going to add some new cast there under armpit okay and those stitches and front and back stitches okay the total count has to be multiple of 16 because the uh, the flower design is group of 16 mine is 144 144 is actually multiple of 16. So I have a choice of no adding any new cast under armpit or I need to add 16 stitch total. So I decide I am going to add 8 for one side and 8 new cast for the other side. All right? So, 144 plus 16 will be 160 stitch total, which is multiple of 16. All right? And for some reason, whatever reason, if you can't have multiple of 16 after you add some new cast underneath of your armpit, don't worry. When you start knitting your body, you can adjust, okay? You can adjust, I mean, increase few stitches or decrease one or two stitches. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about it, okay? Just try to get the, uh, you know, uh, the number close to multiple of 16 and adjust. If you couldn't get, the number multiple of 16, okay? But the, the best way is you can, you know, um, add some new cast underneath and then become multiple of 16. So, you know, whenever you kind of, you know, uh, reach to the, uh, the end of the increasing, you kind of have to count and then, you know, you kind of have to think, okay, maybe this is the time I should stop so it's easier. And then ideal number is four to eight stitches adding under armpit. Okay? So let's start separating. I'm actually already knitting to the, uh, you know, first raglan marker. Okay? And then with the uh, uh, scrap yarn, okay, transfer all the sleeve stitch onto scrap yarn, all right? 
So again, um, from the beginning, knit until the first raglan line, and whenever you hit the first raglan line, transfer all the sleeve stitch onto scrap yarn, and then tie the knot. Okay? Don't use the uh, stitch holder because you might want to, you know, put it on, and it's going to be too hard to knit if you're using stitch holder. And now I am going to add eight stitch for me. Okay, under the armpit, I add eight stitch this side and eight stitch the other side. And then start knitting back piece. And some people ask, you know, can I add more or can I add less? Sure, it's up to you. All right. But um, once the raglan line reach underneath of the, uh, the your armpit, the sweater itself is big enough for sure. All right. So you got to do uh, same thing the other side. Okay. For the other sleeve. And there we go. I actually separate the, uh, the second sleeve. Add eight stitches already. All right. Now, I'm just knitting the body part. Until, okay, where the flower design starts. Do you remember what I told you? At the very beginning, the flower design itself is eight inch. And I'm thinking maybe add one inch rib after the, uh, the flower design. So total of nine to ten. Okay. So I stop about nine to ten inch before the bottom. Okay, and you know, maybe adjust after that. So that's how you decide. So, the uh, needing the sample like this is kind of important, okay, and good practice too. And this is how I figured it out. I knit long enough, all right, and then I put the sample, and okay, maybe this is about right time, and the length is 16, and add a little bit more, you know, rib, so this is perfect. Anyway, when you're ready, add markers every 16 stitches all right because this um design is group of 16 you just have to repeat those 16 stitches so it's easier for you to find out if you make a mistake so row number one to row number four straightforward repeat of knit seven Pearl one and knit eight. 16 stitch, right? So every 16 stitch, you just have to repeat this, you know, pattern. And I'm not going to show you every rows. I pick the rows, you know, I should tell you because little tricky. Okay. Only tricky part is yarn over part like i said you know i'm not using yarn over the word okay i use double yarn over or yarn front or yarn back if there is any all right so uh, i pick few rows that i'm going to show you otherwise just follow my written instruction it's straightforward all right so don't worry about it so next i'll show you 
Rule number five. There's the uh, double yarn over and yarn front. So I'll show you. Knit five to start. Four and five. Then knit two together. Easy. Then double yarn over. So knit two together. And double yarn over means, okay, yarn over is just come out front. So double. One more round. Then purl. And then yarn front. It's already yarn front. So keep the yarn front. Then SSK. Slip, slip, knit. Then knit six. Don't think too much. All right? Just follow my written instruction. Okay? One more time, I'll show you. Knit five. Three, four, five, and then knit two together. Knit two together. Then double yarn over, yarn front, and one more. Okay, then purl one. one. <clears throat> then keep the yarn front, then SSK. Then knit six. That's it. Easy. And then I'll show you row number six as well. Row number six is quite simple. But I just want to show you what it's like. Just top of the yarn over part. All right. So knit seven. Two. Three. Four. Five, six, right here. This is yarn over. Creates the gap, hole. Okay? So sometimes people think, what is this stitch? Right? That's the yarn over. Then purl one. Then here comes another yarn over. So you just have to knit that yarn over part. All right? So don't even think that's, you know, mistake you just did something wrong no that's the way it's supposed to be now i jump into row 15 easy however the new technique mb which is make bubble all right so i'll show you don't worry about it i will show you a couple more times at least so, row number 15. Slide the begin marker, then knit two together to start. Okay? Knit two together. And knit four after that. One, two, three, four. And Y. F means yarn front, so yarn over, right? Yarn front, then knit one, then MB. Make bubble. So let's do make bubble, knit, okay, front back don't drop the stitch and one more front so you create three stitch with one stitch all right and then turn the work now your wrong side then knit three the three stitch you just create and then Turn the work. Now you're on right side. And knit three again. Then turn around. Knit three. So first knit 
front, back, front, then knit three, three times. And then next, right side, let's make a bubble. Yarn back, okay, keep the yarn back, slip one purl wise, there we go, knit two together. I have to, you know, uh, decrease, right? So I decrease one stitch and then PSSO. Pass the slip stitch over. Now one stitch again. And that's bubble. Right? And then knit one. Make sure you knit kind of tight right there after the bubble. Yarn front, knit four, one, two, three, four, then SSK, then knit one. I'll show you one more time, so don't worry about it. And slide the marker. There you go. You see. Okay, now. Let's do together again. Knit two together. Knit four. One, two, three, four. And then yarn front. Knit one. Now bubble. Okay. Knit front don't drop the stitch off okay and back loop now knit front and back and one more front so you create two extra stitch now you have a three stitch instead of one okay turn around wrong side and then knit three you have to do knit three three times right so knit three on wrong side so i'm doing garter stitch you know both right and wrong side knitting stitch that's gotta be garter right so right side again knit three this is uh, second time knit three then turn around another knit three one well this is actually last knit three two and three then turn around you're on right side and keep the working yarn back right slip one purl wise knit two together then pssl pass the slip stitch over there you go now you have one stitch on the right needle then keep the yarn tight and knit one right yarn front knit four then ssk then knit one and probably some people think okay so can i use stuck in it stitch instead of the uh, garter stitch for make bubble sure you can and i'll show you whichever easier for you okay okay so i use the uh, garter stitch and now i'll show you how to make bubble with stockinette stitch which is easy just knit on the right side and purl on the wrong side that's the only difference okay so knit front and back this is the stockinette stitch version 
Okay, create the uh, three stitch instead of one and turn around. Now this is wrong side, so purl instead of knit three. Purl three and then turn around and right side, so knit. It's a little bit different texture, but not too much. And maybe the uh, stock net version is a little bit smaller. I don't know that's if that's true or not. Uh, wrong side, purl three, right? And then turn around and do the uh, same. Keep the yarn back, slip one purl wise, knit two together. I'm having a tough time. I, I think I knit too tight. And then PSS up. That's it. I like garter stitch one. But some people use stockinette stitch version, whichever. All right. So that's it for make bubble. Next, I meet you row 21. It's a little bit tricky again because start with yarn over. Okay. I already started the uh, row number 21, okay? Row number 21, finish with purl one, okay? And then slide the marker and you have to repeat, right? So because I finish with purl, the working yarn is front already. And then the repeat, the starts with the uh, yarn front. So keep the yarn front okay do not do the uh, you know um, double yarn over anything keep the yarn and then knit one and now you have to be careful when you knit one okay make sure the yarn over is after the marker sometimes you know it kind of slips because in you know in the middle of the uh, the marker right so when you knit over the marker kind of behind it's going to slip like this so now yarn over is right side of the marker that's not good because you add one stitch for previous 16 stitch right so please make sure okay if you start with yarn over make sure yarn over is in the right group so there you go yarn over out front and then knit one on the second stitch that's the place you have to be very careful. And then I will show you row number 22 because I really want you to make sure about it. Otherwise, you will ruin the pattern. All right? So row number 22. Always think. Okay, yarn over, start. So I just knit over the yarn over, right? That that that's easy because you know this is you know big marker, so it's it's kind of easy. You have to be very careful with next batch. Okay, make sure the yarn over is after the marker okay if the yarn over is before the marker you think oh okay this is something wrong there we go see I just actually did there purposely if that's the case wrong always purl one and slide the marker then you knit over the yarn over all right 
Now, jump into row 39. Nothing really new except one thing, which is KBL. Same as neck rib. Knit back loop. I need that texture because I kind of want to distinguish, you know, the flower part and the bottom part, which actually um, same as bottom rib. So just knit back loop. You already know, so I'm not going to explain too much. All right. Again, the, the reason why I use the uh, KBL, that's because I want to show different texture. All right? So, okay, guys. So, this is the last row of the flower, row 49, repeat of KBL. And pearl one, KBL, pearl one, KBL, pearl one, eight times and all the way around. And if you want to add a little bit more length as rib, you just keep repeating row 49 until your desired length. Then you bind off. And make sure you bind off with KBL. I will show you. All right. So here it comes. This is end of my bottom rib, KBL and pearl. And it says bind off with one size bigger. Okay. Bigger you know, needle. So now I have a six millimeter needle and I do KBL, then pearl, then bind off. And don't kind of pull too tight. It's not going to be the, uh, you know, stretchy as much if you pull or bind off too tight. All right. And this technique use when you knit the uh, sleeve as well. Okay. So let's see how did it go. There we go. Body parts done. Beautiful flower stitch. And... As you can see, I add about one inch at the bottom of the uh, flower stitch. That much. It's really up to you. And bind off with the uh, one size bigger so it's quite stretchy. All right. And I've done one sleeve. I didn't decrease. Well, I decrease at the bottom of the uh, sleeve just before the uh, rib. So I can make it, you know, balloon-like, you know, sleeve, right? And add the, uh, the sleeve rib, bind off. It's stretchy. It's perfect. So there we go. Okay, so let's move on to the other side of the uh, sleeve. First of all, transfer all the sleeve stitch onto needle and I want you to add two markers one the yellow one just before one last original stitch this is the beginning side right so this is last and in the middle of new cast you add I add eight stitches so I put the uh, you know fifth stitch. It's just a, you know, uh, indication of that's where I want to start. Okay. Start in the middle of new cast. And then I'm going to knit up four just above the uh, new cast. And then 
I am going to knit two extra right there. Did you see that part? Okay. In between last new cast and the first original stitch, there is two kind of, you know, running thread type. This one and this one. Okay. This is the one. Those two I am going to. And pick up, you know, one stitch come with it. Because if I pick, knit up, you know, like that, it's going to be big hole anyway. And to knit up extra stitch, that's because I want to minimize the, uh, the big gap. So you got to watch very carefully. So this is in the center of my new cast. So one, two, okay, three. And next is the last knit up for new cast. And before you knit up the last one, put the uh, marker. I'll tell you why later, okay? And then knit up last stitch above the uh, new cast. And now you have to knit up two extra right there, those two. And you grab the bottom right there, knit up with those stitch. This side, the reason why I try to minimize the gap, can you see? If I pick up the st that stitch with that extra running thread, you can minimize the, uh, the gap really well. There we go. Like that. See, it's be beautiful. And there's still a little gap, but don't worry. You can minimize more. Then knit all the way down to yellow marker. And you got to do this, you know, the other side. All right. So there we go. I knit up. After the yellow marker, that's going to be my last original stitch, right? So knit until or, uh, the yellow marker and slide and knit last original. Then right after that, the two extra knit up coming. You know which one to which. This one and this one. Kind of running thread. And you got to knit up with... One kind of beside or behind. So make sure you grab two thread, one here and then that running thread. Then knit up. You know, you kind of try to look, you know, try to look for the best. This is divider. Yeah, and that's the running thread. So, you know, the one behind. There we go. Try, you know, anything. Okay, and I just knit up two extra one, And then now I need to knit up four above the uh, new cast. So total of eight new cast I did, right? It's four the other side and four this side. There we go. And I just actually need up one round. Okay? So, now, let's start. Put the uh, begin marker and knit until the first marker, orange marker. Now, let's close. The closing gap I told you earlier, make the uh, extra stitch and then decrease. That's the best way. So I increase two now. So after 
orange marker. That's going to be my last new cast and the extra SSK. There we go. And the other one, one extra and my first original stitch. Need two together. That's it. Create two extra and then decrease those two extra with original stitch. That's about it. See? It's actually closed. You know, I used to knit up one stitch. But um, if you pick right place, there's not much gap. However, if you didn't, there's still um, visible gap. So I decide I pick two extra. And it worked really well. And if you didn't knit up with two thread, it's um, there is still little gap. So I decide I'm going to knit up those two with other extra thread below or beside. Okay, so this is yellow marker after that. That's my last stitch and new extra SSK, right? SSK and knit two together. And next, my extra stitch and my first knit up above the uh, new cast, knit two together. That's it. And then finish this row. After this, Again, I'm not decreasing the sleeve, so I just knit until my desired length, which was just past my elbow. All right? So if you want to, you know, make it long sleeve and want to decrease, I put the link in my description box so you can go and watch. But this is kind of spring sweater, so... I make it half sleep. So I meet you at the bottom of the sleeve. I have to decrease to make it balloon. So um, just knit, knit, knit. And here comes. I think I knit, knitted it enough. And how did I find out how many stitch I should decrease? Easy. Just put my arm like this and make sure how much I want. And then subtract. And it was like, you know, uh, 28 stitch, something like that. So I said, oh. Why don't I just, you know, decrease half, right? So, but sometimes, you know, the people has quite big, you know, sleeve. So half is not enough. So, which means you have to decrease second row too. So, to me, just repeat of need to together one round to make it half size. But again, if you want to, you know, uh, decrease more than half, next row you might have to adjust a little bit more. Or if you want to decrease less, you can do repeat of knit two and knit two together. Knit two, knit two together, something like that. Okay? So as many as you want, as long as you decrease evenly, that's fine. So this is end of my decreasing row and after this I add rib and as you can see my rib should be repeat of KBL and pearl one KBL pearl one same as other rib and then bind off with one size bigger especially for sleep you don't want to have a tight 
sleeve, right? So make sure to bind off with one size bigger needle. All right? That's about it. This is it. So let's see how it goes. There we go. I add 10 rows of the uh, rib and stretchy. It's beautifully done. This is so easy. Tricky part is the yarn over part. But, you know, as long as you follow my instruction, double yarn over and yarn front, you should be able to knit this easily. All right? If you have any question, let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Enjoy knitting. Bye for now.